practical here today, we're going to prepare ethane gas. So here is the model of ethane gas. Two carbons bonded by a triple bond with two hydrogens on either end. So in order to prepare ethane gas, you need the apparatus here I have in front of me, a buckler flask with a dropping funnel, and a dreschel head into a collecting jar. So first of all, in order to do this practical, look at the chemicals. The solids we're going to make the ethane gas out of is calcium carbide, which I'll be putting into the buckler flask. And I'm going to be putting deionized water in here into the dropping funnel. And then when you're preparing ethane gas, there's a lot of impurities. So in order to remove that impurities, you need acidified copper sulfate. So I have my copper sulfate mixed with sulfuric acid in this solution here. And I'll be adding this into the threshold bottle. So I'm going to pour the copper sulfate into my threshold bottle, roughly three quarters filled. And then I'm going to put my threshold head in here, make sure to clamp it up, put the threshold head into the solution, so ensure that the tube goes to the bottom of the container. And then the tube that goes to the bottom of the container, the other end of this rubber tubing must be connected onto my Buckner flask. So I put your rubber onto your Buckner flask. And now we've got all the apparatus complete. So addition of chemicals. Into the container, the Buckner flask, I'm going to put my calcium carbide. So calcium carbide comes in large lumps. So put that in to the bottom of my container. Again, it doesn't really matter how much you add in, approximately 20 or 30 grams. And put our funnel back onto the top of the container. And I'm using deionized, deionized water. So here I have a beaker of deionized water. Make sure the tap is closed before you start. Now the reaction is ready to go. And now we want to, where we're going to connect the glass, we're going to get our beehive into our water trough. So there's our beehive. And our rubber tubing goes into the end of the beehive. And the gas is going to come out of our beehive and be connected in our glass jars. So with the glass jars, I've got these previously filled full of water. Put them into the water trough and slide glass off the bottom and then you can put your apparatus is ready for collection. However, if I fill the gas here now, if I start reaction at this start stage, I've got air in all of these voids inside here. That air will be displaced into a glass jar. So remove the tube until you're ready to collect the gas and then we're ready to start reaction. Okay, so when I open the tap here, the water is going to drop down onto the calcium carbide, the CaC2, producing ethane gas and calcium oxide as a byproduct. So I'm going to gently let some water into the container and we'll start to see bubbles then produce pretty quickly. We'll start to see bubbles of gas coming across this tube. This bubble is the displaced air that's in the container, so we don't collect the first few drops of gas. Now that all the displaced air is gone, I can now collect the ethane gas for the flame test. So I can go into the, boiling, into the beehive hood. You see the bubbles coming up here, displacing the water downwards so now my glass jar is full of ethane gas and I will now be able to do my flame test on the ethane gas, which is the definitive test to see whether I've got ethane present or not. Now, before we actually do the flame test, I'm, first of all, I'm going to do the demonstration of the check to see whether I've got an unsaturated compound. So remember, this is a check to see if we've got an unsaturated compound, not the check for ethane gas. The check for ethane gas is solely the flame test. For the tests, we use some test tubes. So into test tube one, I'm going to put potassium permanganate, the acidified potassium permanganate, this purple solution here. And it's also advisable to have a test test tube as well, so you can show the color before you do the reaction. So that's my potassium permanganate test solution is now ready. And then with bromine water, again, this is my test solution I'm going to put into a test tube. Add the bromine water the test tube and another solution I'll get my test solution ready as well so I can see the color beforehand so I've my bromine water beforehand so in this decolorization practical you bubble ethane gas through the acidified potassium permanganate the permanganate the manganese in the permanganate goes from plus seven to plus two and it gets decolorized Open your test, test tube, put your 
tube into it and if you have an unsaturated compound you will get the colorization of the potassium permanganate. So very gently. I'm bubbling the ethane gas through the potassium permanganate and as the, the ethane gas reacts with the permanganate it'll turn colorless. So let that continue for a while and you see the advantage now of having the before color ready you can see this is decolorizing in front of, our, front of our eyes here. Test two is the decolorization of bromine water. So here I have some bromine water. I'm going to bubble my gas through the bromine water. The reaction is slowed down, so I need to add some more water. So my ethane gas, there's an additional reaction occurring. The bromine is adding across the triple bond and putting bromines onto the compound and this should decolorize the solution. This takes a little bit longer, let it go through. But again, as the reaction proceeds, we can look at our test solution and you can see the decolorization is occurring. Now what I'm going to do is take out my gas jar. So I'm gonna slip this glass disc underneath before I lift the jar out of the water. And now I've got my sample of ethane gas for the flame test. So put the glass jar into the fume cupboard. Always make sure your lighter is lit before you remove the glass disc. So we see the sooty flame, definitely we have produced ethane gas.